Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we will be having a look at the Flutter Duration Picker package. If you want to follow along more slowly or copy some code snippets, have a look at the write up of this video on my blog. I will link it below in the video description. And now let's get right to it. Also, if you enjoy my content, maybe consider subscribing and liking to help me making more videos just like this one. So what does the Duration Picker actually do? Well, of course, Users can easily pick a duration by turning a slider, a rotary slider, and this will return a duration in form of a dart duration object. It also features a material design, and it still has some weird behaviors, but that is fine as long as they are being fixed in the future. So how do we use it? First, let's create a new Flutter project the preferred way you like to do it. For me, it's just via VS Code and the command palette. I will just quickly delete some of the boilerplate code Flutter provides us with. And here we're just gonna put a center, just so that we have something there. Delete all of the comments, just like that. Now we just have to add the Flutter Duration Picker package into our pepstick.yaml. So let's do that right now. And we basically have two ways of doing that. We can either add the git dependency because there are some changes, some newest changes. They are not on the pub.dev page somehow. So if you want the newest changes, choose the git version, but maybe there's some unstable, some bugs as well. Or use the pub.dev version. I will link both in the description below as well. I will now use the git version. For example, this works better if you want to use a dark theme in your app. Then of course run flutter pub get to download the dependency and that's it for the pubstack.yaml file. Now whenever you want to use it you of course have to import it or let your IDE use it, do it. I will just quickly do it right now and then we can use it like this. We of course have to first create a stateful widget. In here we want to return a scaffold with a body of a center. Um, you don't have to do that, I just want to use it so it's centered. And then as a child, we want to use a duration picker. This is the widget we will use all the time now. On change, we'll use an anonymous callback with a duration parameter. And this will get called every time the picker dura the pick duration changes. And the duration parameter is of type duration and contains the current duration. You can also hit control spacebar to autocomplete this. And this is the method I've been talking about. So this is the duration parameter. And this will be of type duration. You can also hover in this code over that and we'll see duration duration. Let's just print this out every time it changes. And there are some other parameters, for example, snap to minutes. And this will basically say to which intervals of minutes we want to snap to. So I'm just gonna choose five as a double. And you can also specify a width and a height and the duration itself. But those, the on change is basically the only one you, is required, it's the only one. So we can see that this is just a default blue we specify it up here, taking the primary swatch, and you can also see it prints out the duration. So one minute is like this, return it to 30 minutes, it's looking like this, and so on and so on. So basically this is like any other input widget. But what could you use it for? I personally use it in an app where the user could create his own recipe library. And of course for a recipe you need to know how long it takes to make it. So when the user enters a new recipe, I use the duration picker to get the time it takes to make the recipe. This way I can also pretty easily and uniformly display a duration later on compared to a simple text field where every user may enter a duration in a different unit, so seconds or hours, or with a colon or without, and so on. The small widget solves all of these problems and more because it just returns a duration object. If you want to, you can also have a look at the source code of the app I mentioned just a few seconds ago. Here, I will link it in the video description. 
And if you want to see how I implemented the widget into an application, you can also scroll down a bit further in the video description and you will see how I implemented it specifically. So thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions just leave them below in the comments. But till then, see you next time.